Now before we go on, let's again have a look at the output. So if you run the program, we got the following result. And the initial distribution is unit pulse, which may be seen as a special discrete form of our triangle distribution with a half width of one. And the outcome of the first convolution, that's a triangular distribution. And the outcome of the second convolution, that looks almost like a triangular distribution. But if you remember the probability values that we computed earlier with 1 16th, 4 16th, 6 16th, you see that is not a triangle anymore. So let's see how that evolves. So let's make our arena larger. And instead of three times, we just do 50 times and then we run it again. So this is now the outcome. Let's zoom in. Here's the beginning. And as we move on, our distributions, they lose this triangle shape until in the end, they become pretty much bell shaped. Now that's quite interesting, because we have a certain distribution and using that convolution we lose the shape of our original distribution. Even though it was kind of a nice mathematical shape we started with. Also, of course, as we move on, the distributions get wider every time and so they start to overlap each other. So that the robot is at position 960 in this iteration with the same probability as it is on position 960 in the next iteration. So how far did we get with our attempt to model the uncertainty? Well, what we have so far is we start in a position, then we move. And when we end up in another position, then we move again and so on. So what we have so far is, first of all, we are able to model the uncertainty regarding our current position. So we use a distribution to describe our current position. And also this move here, we use another distribution to model the movement. Now what is still missing is the measurement. So let's have a look at that. So say there is a manufacturer of a laser scanner and before selling its products he will do a calibration. So he will mount it somewhere right? and then he will have some kind of a fixed wall and he will shoot rays at this wall and the lighter will tell him now it's here. Say the fixed distance which is calibrated very accurately will be 5 meters but the laser scanner measures a little bit more and then he will measure again and it will be less, he will measure again, it will be more again and so on. And so. He will put up together all those measurements and do something like a histogram, which will end up in something like that. So in the end, the manufacturer will publish a data sheet telling you that this scanner has an accuracy of something like plus minus 4 centimeters, meaning that here might be 4 centimeters. And now the peak of this curve, that should be on the actual value, otherwise it's a systematic deviation. And the manufacturer will try to remove those systematic deviations so that just the stochastic part remains. So now for our case, this means the following. If there's a wall and I have a laser scanner, but I don't know where it is, but I shoot a ray and the laser scanner tells me it's 5 meters, then my conclusion would be that I'm here, 5 meters away from the wall. However, incorporating that inaccuracy that is well known from the datasheet of the scanner, I have to put that here, of course. So this means this uncertainty in measuring translates to an uncertainty in my current position. So what does this mean for our robot? Again, here's our scene and here's our robot. And what we did so far is we modeled the uncertainty in position in movement and so we know the robot is here but as we know it's not really accurate we say this is represented by this distribution so it's here with the highest probability but it might be also somewhere else with an accordingly lower probability now we put this laser scanner on top and the laser scanner measures the distance to a ball and it tells us it's five meters so now we measure back from the wall those five meters and we end up here we find out that we should be here but we are not exactly here, of course, as we know we have here the error of our laser scanner. So as we see, the motion tells us you're most probably here, but you could also be here, of course. That fits our measurement. It could be as well the case that in reality I'm really here and the measurement is wrong. So I can choose either I have to go into the lower probability range of my position or into the lower probability range of my measurement. And now. This is called the prior because this curve is known before I do a measurement. And then we have here the distribution or the probability of the measurement. And now what I want to know is what is the result of this? So if I put together the prior distribution and the measurement distribution, what will be the final distribution? What shall I do? Shall I add 
those distributions or subtract or multiply or divide? Or do I have to do again a convolution? 